Hey folks, this is Don from BrainBlinks.com and today I'm going to show you how to play a board game that I'm making. It's called Hexagolf. And as you might imagine, it's a game about golf. It lets you play around the golf using some dice, some custom cards, this golf course made out of hexagons, and uh, these crazy clubs made out of hexagons. This is something that I've been working on for a while, and it's still a work in progress, but I feel like it's ready to be played, and I'm excited to get it out there and get some more eyes and hands on it, get some feedback going, get some new ideas coming in, and uh, or in this case, it's going to be virtual hands because I've got it set up in Tabletop Simulator. This is a, a, an easy way to get it out there, get it played. Um, soon, there will be a a print and play version uh, that uh, you'll be able to grab and make for yourself if that's something that interests you more. I just need to get uh, into a more final shape before I start working on that. So yeah, let me go ahead and uh, show you how to play Hexagolf. Okay, just like in real golf, Hexagolf is played on a golf course. And uh, that golf course is made up of individual holes, individual sections with a tee and a fairway and some hazards and a green, importantly, which has the cup or the hole on it where you're trying to get the ball. So your goal is to get your ball from the tee safely across the fairway and onto the green and into the cup. And you want to do that in as few shots as possible, as few strokes as possible. So you're shooting for a low score in this game, not a high score. And just like in golf, there's hazards. The fairway, this light green, is safe, and you can always get a clean shot off the fairway. This is the rough, this darker green. In real life, this would be some thicker, shaggier grass that your ball can get sunk down into and grab your club on the way through. Uh, this yellow speckled part is the bunker. Uh, it's a big hole full of sand that you don't want to get your ball in. That's even harder to get out of and a harder to control which way your ball goes out when it does go out. The dark brown is a heavy rough, real thick grass or even bushes and uh, things like that. Stay out of there. And then there's water, uh, the blue hexes. When you go into the water, you get a penalty of one stroke. And you have to drop your ball out behind the water and shoot again. So it can really set you back. Stay out of the water. <laughs> um, these orange hexes are trees. Uh, a lot of golf courses, uh, trees are a big part of it. And uh, sometimes the hole can be designed around a set of trees. Uh, to get you to see how close you can get to them or maybe even try to sneak it through the branches. Uh, but that's the hazards. Each hole also has a par score, uh, an average or good score for the hole. In this case, this is a par 3. That's the shortest holes. And if you can get from the tee across the fairway and into the hole in 3 strokes then you're doing well that's a good score for this hole over here we've got a par four if you can get to this one in three strokes that's called a birdie it's one under par that's a great score you want to that's what you're shooting for you want to get birdies <laughs> if you can get to a hole in three strokes or i mean excuse me two under par in this case here's a par five if you could get from the t to the hole in three strokes here that'd be an eagle Minus two, that's an excellent score. And if you take all the pars from all the holes in the course and add them up, you get par for the course. <clears throat> so basically you're shoot, you want to shoot par to get a good game, under par to get a better, great game.
Each shot that you take in the game is broken up into six different steps. For each stroke, you'll choose a club, you'll do your backswing. If you're lying in a hazard, you'll do a hazard check. Then you'll roll your dice for the swing. You do the follow through, and then the ball will land. When you get up here on the green, you'll need to uh, get the ball in the hole with a putt. Unless you land right on the hole, this icon is the hole. If you land there, ball goes straight in. No additional strokes to get in the hole. If you land on this one, that's the one putt icon. That means you put the ball in the hole with one putt, and you'll add one to your score. This one is called the tricky putt. You get it in there, you'll have to come over here to the putting green and play a little mini game to find out how you score for the hole. Now you have 18 different clubs, but you can only choose to use a club that's in your caddy area right now. So during the club selection and any other time you're choosing a club, you can only choose from this caddy area. So I've already mentioned the skill cards, but there's also another set of skills that you have that you can use at any time without a card. And I call these the anytime skills. And these kind of let you swap one of your resources for another one. Like you can discard two cards that you don't want to draw a new card. Or you could discard two cards to gain one focus. Or you could discard two focus to draw a card. And these are a great way to trade something you don't want for something that you might need. Or a chance to get something you might need. <clears throat> you can also consult your caddy at any time by discarding a focus. And drawing a new club, putting it in the caddy. And after you draw that club, you may, if you want, discard a club from your caddy and put it back in the bag. So these are some things you can do at any time. You just can't do them while another effect is resolving. So finish one effect and the, before you start a new one. All right, I think that's enough of an introduction. Let's go ahead and set up for a game. We've got the course book over here and it's uh, opened up to hole number one. And over here is the hole number one putting green if we need it. Hole number two. We've got our skill cards shuffled up face down and we have an area for a discard pile over here. We have a, a caddy area and we'll put all the clubs in the bag and draw three random clubs. Ooh, we've got some good drivers there. Some good long clubs. And then we'll draw one focus. We'll make sure we have our swing dies, our hazard die, and our ball. <clears throat> and we're ready to start. Every time you start a new hole, you draw up to three cards into your hand. So you draw until you have three cards in your hand. If you already have three cards or more, then don't draw any cards. And you also put your ball on the T. Those are the purple hexes here. And you can put it on any one of the three hexes. You can also move it to a different hex on the T while you're choosing your club. The first step in every shot is going to be your club selection. And this is where you consider your situation and decide what club you want to use from your caddy area. And it's okay to grab a club and check out the alignment on the course before you choose what to do with it. You can move your ball to a different section of the tee if you want. Just put it back. Choose another one to line up temporarily. And when you're ready to go, 
you go ahead and choose your club and go on to the next step. If you're playing and uh, let's say you've already played a few shots, if you take the last club in the caddy for your shot, you get a bonus of one focus. So a reminder down here, gain one focus when you take the last club from the caddy. And those focus could come in very handy during the game. So don't forget to take that when you clear out your caddy. And anytime you need a club and the caddy's empty, you grab three random ones from the bag. Now that you've chosen your club, you're ready for the backswing step. And during this step, you'll take that club, line up your shot on the green, and you'll be able to see the possible outcomes where your ball might land after your swing roll. Any hexagon that has a number on it is somewhere where the ball could land. Once you place your club, you have an opportunity to play your backswing skills. Each skill card has on the bottom listed when you may play that card. So, for instance, Strange Bounce can only be played during a landing step. This Power Swing can be played during the backswing step. And it costs two focus to play. Left hand corner up here shows you how much the card costs. Mulligan would cost three focus to play during the follow through step. So let's go ahead and play this card. Let's we'll discard two of our focus tokens, put this in our play area, and then it says move your club one hex forward. So we'll move it forward. Uh, directions in this in hexagolf are always relative to the page so forward is up towards the top of the page back is back towards the bottom and left and right if you go left you can choose between either of the two adjacent hexes on the left and the same for the right so now that we've moved that club forward we have an opportunity to get on the green right from the T with an 8 if we roll an 8 to an 11 or if we roll a 7 we'll go in the bunker so we'll be hoping for an 8 to 11 in this case now there are some rules for how you place your club it must have at least one hexagon adjacent to the ball so I uh, see the ball here all six of these would be adjacent to the ball so this would be okay. You can flip the club. You can rotate it. Any, any, anything is fine. Upside down numbers is fine. It just has to have one hexagon adjacent to the ball. So that's fine. This is no good. There's a gap here. You must place it adjacent to the ball, and then maybe you'll have a, something to move your club after it's placed. But when you place it, you must have at least one hexagon adjacent to the ball. So this is fine, fine, not good. Not good, good. Okay, and you'll also notice that some clubs have an extra icon on them, this T icon on the end. When you get a club like that, this hexagon must be adjacent to the ball. So this is good. This hexagon with the T icon is adjacent to the ball. This is good. That, not good. This one is not adjacent to the ball. This, not good. Because the T icon's way up here. You're still adjacent to the ball down here, but this is not good. This is fine. That would be fine. So watch for those T icons. <clears throat> this kind of simulates on the longer clubs in golf that are less versatile and harder 
to uh, control than like a pitching wedge or a, an iron. The next step in the sequence is the hazard check. Now, if your ball is on the tee or safely on a fairway hex, then you can skip this step and go straight on to the swing. But if you're on any of the hazards, the rough, the heavy rough, if you're on a bunker or the trees, you're going to need to roll a hazard die to see whether or not you need to move your club before the swing. So first we'll find the hazard rating of the hex that you're on. You'll see here the standard rating for the rough is 3, bunkers 4, heavy rough and the trees are 5. In this case we're in the rough so our hazard rating is a 3. And our goal when we're rolling here is to get equal to or greater than the hazard rating. And if we do that we'll get out clean and we'll go straight on to the swing. If we get lower than the hazard rating, then we'll have to move our club before we swing. So let's go ahead and roll, see what happens. We've got a five, that's well above the hazard rating of a three, so we're safe. We get out clean and go on to the swing. Let's say we rolled a two instead and failed. So we fail the check. Now we have to roll the hazard dice, the hazard die again to see how we move the club. It's either one and two, three, four, five, six. So we got a five. That means back and to the right. And now you see we can no longer get to the green. We might end up in the bunker with an eight to eleven instead of on the green. So once you're done with the hazard check, you're on to the next step. The swing step is where you'll roll some dice and uh, launch your ball up into the air on its way to its landing spot and its new home on the course. To do that, you just grab your swing dice, give them a roll. You note the result. We got an eight and match it up with the numbers on the club as you have it laid out on the course and in this case pow we're right on the green just like we wanted you might also have a backswing card in effect from the previous steps in this case let's say we played this familiar spot card during the backswing step and it says roll twice for your swing and choose one result so we would roll an eight and an eight <laughs> we'd choose one of those and we still end up on the green we're doing well today or maybe we had this hard draw we played this in our backswing and it says swing roll plus four or minus four choose before you roll and let's say we chose plus four because we were hoping to kind of nudge it up into these higher numbers rather than these lower numbers down here. So let's give this a roll. So we got a four. That would have put us here, but instead we add four and get an eight, and we're on the green again. All right, we're three for three. And once you find your swing result, which is your swing roll plus any backswing modifiers, you go ahead on to the follow through step. The follow through step is uh, your chance to play your follow through skills that you have in your hand. And these skills, um, they might let you re roll your swing dice or one of your swing dice, they might let you change the result or even choose a specific swing result, which is a very powerful effect. Uh, some of these follow through skills are very powerful. <clears throat> Partly because you get to roll your dice before you decide what to do. <clears throat> so in this example, let's say we had our club laid out, we rolled our swing dice, got a seven, 
Uh, unfortunately, that ended us in a bunker, and we're hoping to change that. We don't want to be in a hazard. So we can look over here. We've got this guard, Body English. This is a great option. It's a follow-through card. It's a zero cost, so we can play it without having any focus. And it says swing roll plus one or minus one. So that lets us change our seven into an eight, which would put our ball on the green instead of the bunker. So that'd be a perfect card for this situation. And let's say maybe we have this mid swing adjustment card in our hand. It says re roll one of your swing dice, costs one focus. So we pay our focus. Put this in play. Reroll one of your swing dice. So let's say we wanted to roll this one. And we got a seven again. So in that case, our adjustment that we made on our follow through wasn't good enough. And we still ended up in the bunker. Now, sometimes you might have a card in effect from the backswing. Let's say on this shot, we rolled a five, but we had a backswing card in effect and had chosen plus two. So that means our swing result was a seven, puts us in the bunker. And let's say we played this mid swing adjustment card that says re-roll one of your swing dice. When we re-roll this dice, this die, you still get to use, you still apply your backswing effect. So this would be nine plus two. This time we get an 11 and that put us on the green. So your backswing cards stay in effect if you re-roll your dice. That's why you want to leave them in the play area rather than just discarding them when you play them. Once you've played any of your follow-through skills, you'll have your final swing result, and you can move on to the landing step. And in this step, you just la you just match that final swing result to the number on the club, and then you go ahead and you put the club in the used club pile. And uh, you'll total these clubs up at the end of the hole to find your score for that hole. You'll also have a chance in this step to play any landing skill cards that you have. In this case, I have a couple of them in my hand. I have backspin, which for one focus will let me move the ball one hex back. Or I have bounce right which would let me move the ball one hex to the right. Uh, now in hexagolf, all of the directions are relative to the page. So forward is always up towards the top of the page. Back is towards the bottom. Left and right, you get to choose between the two hexes. So it says right. In this case, I could choose this hex or this hex. So I could play bounce right, uh, pay two focus and then move my ball one hex to the right and I could choose this get on the green and do a tricky putt instead of being in the bunker and it's the same for the left if it says left you can choose one of these two hexes once your ball has landed you'll need to check to see if you're on the green or not. If you're on the green, you can putt the ball and finish off the hole. If you're not on the green, you just go back to the club selection step and go through the shot sequence again. If you are on the green, just check the icon under your ball. This is the hole icon. If you get it on there, the little exclamation mark, that means you put it in already. It went into the cup from off the green, it was a great shot, and you're done with the hole. If you get it on the plus icon, that means you you have an easy putt. It's a one putt, so you have one stroke to finish off the hole and put it in. And that's represented by grabbing a random club from the bag, 
or a club from your caddy and putting it in the used club pile. That's your shot for your one putt. If you're on the question mark, that means a tricky putt. And you'll need to play the tricky putt mini game to find out your final score for the hole. And we'll get into that in just a second. When you're done putting, you're done with the hole. And you can get your score just by counting up the number of clubs in your used club pile. And you can uh, make a note of your score on this temporary scorecard here. And then you get a bonus of two focus for finishing the hole. And you can take your used clubs and put them back in the bag. Take the cards you played and put them into the discard pile. And then find the next hole. And go back to the start a new hole step. And that's it. You're ready for the next hole. Okay, that covers almost everything. But let's back up and talk about a couple of things I skipped. Like what happens when you land in the water. Water is one of the worst hazards in golf. Because when you land in the water you get one added to your score you get a one stroke penalty so and then you have to drop the ball behind where you went in the water and and hit it again so you kind of get double penalized almost <clears throat> so you want to avoid the water at all costs basically so let's say we landed here after our swing and follow through in the landing now we need to give ourselves a penalty for landing in the water. We do that by grabbing a random club from the bag, putting it in the used club pile. In this case, you don't have the option of taking one from the caddy. You have to take a random one from the bag when you land in the water. So we've got our penalty stroke taken care of. Now we need to move the ball to a new spot to hit the ball. But it can't be closer than we are to the hole now. So let's find out how many hexes we are away from the hole. This exclamation mark. Find the shortest path. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're six hexes from the hole. So our new spot has to be at least six hexes away. <clears throat> so it looks like this hex would probably be the best. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's six. That's fine. This one's too close. One, two, three, four, five. This one would also be good. This one, two, three, four, five. It's too close. It's also a hazard. We probably wouldn't want to go there. If you do end up moving from the water into a hazard, you can go ahead and move the ball again. It just needs to be one hex farther away than you were when you started. So here would be fine. From here, if the ball was here, I could move it here would be fine or here or here so you know, a couple of options or you could hit out of the hazard if you want to and finally we'll talk about these tricky putts uh, you'll remember if you get on the green and uh, you land on the hex with the question mark that means you have to do a tricky putt over here on the putting green to finish off the hole and to do that, first we'll need to add a club to the used club pile that represents the stroke we'll use to make this putt. You can do that by grabbing a club from your caddy area or a random club from the bag. I guess in this case we'll take one from the caddy. If you do take the last one, remember that one focus bonus. Then we take the ball from the hole here and put it over on the putting green that matches the hole. Put it on the hole icon. And now our goal is to cover up all these slope icons with the clubs that we used on this hole. 
these colored hexes are the green got the slope icons these gray ones are outside the green it's okay to put your to cover those up although you may not want to because if you can cover up all of these hexes or all of these icons without covering up any of these gray hexes outside of the green then you get a bonus of one focus so here I've covered all the icons I didn't go outside the green I'd earn a focus as well as finishing off the hole you can also gain a focus by covering every hex that is in the green and if you manage to do both of those things you're kind of a mad wizard and you get a mulligan token as well so you can earn some bonuses while you're doing these tricky putts now let's say that I got to this par 3 in only and I only had two clubs in my used pile here I made it I made it to the I made it here in one stroke and then I added my second club for my tricky putt stroke and I'm left with not enough things to cover up all these slope icons you have a couple options you can add a new club to the used club pile either from your caddy or the bag which will give you more hexes to cover up these icons but it'll also add a stroke to your score so that's one option that'd be in golf let's see if you did that once it'd be like two putting or three putting if you had to do it twice which is uh, would be unusual in hexagolf you can also discard a focus token and use that discarded token to cover up a hex so if you just had one left or you're just trying to squeeze out uh, a putt without drawing a new club you can discard focus and cover up a, a hex with those these when you're done putting these go back into the bag into the supply not back into your hand but in this case we would use these two focus but because we covered these hexes without going outside the green we'd get one back as a bonus so that's something to think about as well also some holes will have hazards near the green you cannot put a club that covers up a hazard hex that'd be okay that would not be okay And I think that's it. <laughs> All right. That's how you play Hexagolf. Or at least this version of it. I've already changed a few rules since I started making this video. But uh, things are in a pretty stable state right now. And uh, are very interested to get some feedback from some fresh eyes, some new players. So if you do play the game, please do take a minute to uh, send me an email or go to my website or even hit me up at board game geek my username there is kitchen Don uh, I really love to hear what you think about it if you have any ideas for changes or additions or whatever um, one thing I didn't mention is that there are a couple of ways to change the difficulty of the game if you want to make it easier just ignore those uh, T icons on the clubs if you want to make it harder check out the T icon and look where that fat part is that part has to go next to the ball in the hard mode it has to be touching the ball so that would be good that would not be good that would not be good this is good it, it makes the longer clubs much less versatile and harder to use when you're close to the hole you can also make the tree obstacles harder tree hazards harder by uh, having them kick in if your club just covers them rather than if your ball lands on them so 
couple of things to mess around with if you think it's too easy. Some of my play testers really took off and just destroyed the course on their first turn because they were thinking ahead and uh, playing strategically and carefully. That's something that I don't usually do. <laughs> Um, and also, since the rules are in kind of flux, uh, you might want to check this note card here uh, about recent changes. And also in the back of the manual, there's a list of recent changes to the rules. So there it is. Hexagolf, play test, go at it, and swing them virtual clubs. Thanks for watching.